There is literally nothing more satisfying than giving someone a book rec based off a book they already love. Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel, The Story Ain't Over. Today's video is one that I absolutely love doing and I've done it quite a few times before. So if you're interested in checking out the previous versions, I'll leave those linked down below. But today's video is an if you like this, then read this video. So I'll be telling you about a book that you may or may not have read and I'll be recommending a book that is similar to it in vibe or characters or plot or in some way that I think you will like if you enjoyed the first one. Obviously this goes vice versa, so if you enjoyed the second one that I recommend, then you might enjoy the first one if you haven't read that. And overall I think this will be a grand old time, but if you're looking for other recommendations, then I highly recommend checking out Book of the Month, which is the sponsor of today's video. Did we like that slide into the sponsorship? Did we? I hope we did. Book of the Month is a super popular online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers like you find books they're gonna love. The way it works is that their team vets hundreds of books that are coming out each month, and from there they curate a selection of books that you can pick from to get in your Book of the Month box each month. So if you end up watching this video and you don't find any book recommendations that you like, then maybe you should be checking out Book of the month for some new book recs. One thing I really love about book of the month is their really awesome skip policy. So if ever you don't like the selections for that particular month, you can just skip that month and continue your subscription later. Book of the month has some of the best prices for hardcover new release adult fiction. If you use my code story, you can grab your first book of the month box for only $9.99. And book of the month is now available in both US and Canada. So for my book of the month box, I decided to grab two books by South Asian authors because as you guys know, I am South Asian. So I love supporting other South Asian so the first book I have is Independence by Chitra Banerjee Deva Karuni. I've read from this author before and I'm excited for this one because it's a historical fiction. It follows three sisters during the partition of British India. So I feel like it's gonna be a really moving and profound historical fiction. And then the other book is Age of Vice by Deepthi Kapoor. And this is a thriller that's set in India and it follows this one really wealthy family and all of the dark and corrupt things going on. I'm so excited to read these books from book of the month this month. So you guys should definitely go check them out using my code story and the link below to get your first box for only $9.99. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into all the recommendations that I have for today. Okay we're starting strong with a pair of books that I think are really similar and one of them is actually one of my all-time favorites. I think you guys can already guess what this is gonna be. So if you like Circe by Madeline Miller which is this Greek mythology retelling about an obscure character from mythology or from a specific epic, The Odyssey, and that character is Circe. If you like this, then you will probably love Kaigei by Vaishnavi Patel. I know I've been talking about this book endlessly for the past year, but I'm not gonna stop. I love this book. And I feel like there's so many aspects of Kaigei that is very similar to Circe. And full disclosure, I actually read Kaigei first before I read Circe, but I do think personally that Kaigei does a lot of the stuff that happens in Circe a bit better. I think Circe tries to make sort of a feminist take on things and tries to give more depth to a traditionally vilified character. And I think it does that, but in a very philosophical and sort of all vibes, no plot kind of way. Whereas Kaigi takes this vilified character from the epic the Ramayana and gives her a whole new light while also showing her in a very feminist light. Like she is someone who is constantly trying to help other women and she's someone who's constantly misunderstood. And I think Kaigi as a book did everything that I wanted Cersei to do. It it has a lot more plot to it, it has a lot more interesting things happening in it. And I also think in comparison to Cersei, where Cersei sort of starts to focus on some of the romances that are going on in the book, this book is firmly focused on Kaigi as a character. The main character is actually asexual as well, so that is an aspect, which is something that I think blends into the story and really makes it more about her as a person rather than her romantic pursuits, which I think was quite refreshing. On the flip side, if you liked Kaige, but you wanted less plot and you wanted more vibes, then definitely go for Cersei. But I think if you are that mythology retelling reader, then these are definitely the books for you. Alrighty, next up I have a couple of romances. So if you liked Book Lovers by Emily Henry, then you'll probably like The Roughest Draft by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. The reason that I'm comparing these ones is simply because they're both romances and also because they both involve characters who are very deeply entrenched with books and with writing. They're are slightly different in the concept, but there's reasons for why you might like one over the other. So Book Lovers is about a book 
editor and a book agent who end up in a small town romance situation and end up falling in love. This book really tackles the idea of romance tropes and also publishing as an industry and also just the idea of like a small town romance. Whereas The Roughest Draft is about two writers who used to have a co-writing relationship and were very popular but they had a falling out and so they no longer write together and in this book they are sort of thrown together in this situation where they have to write another book together on contract and so they are put in this like house over the summer break and they're just forced to finish this book and it gets some tensions rising and gets some confronting what happened previously. I think both of these are fantastic and have some really fun romances. Book Lovers I think is better for the fact that it has more side characters that you might fall in love with and more of a well-rounded plot. Whereas Roughest Draft if you want to focus a little bit more on just the main couple and don't really care for other characters this one might be the one for you. Alternatively if you wanted to read more about like the characters writing things then The Roughest Draft definitely has more of that. Book Lovers has a little bit of that towards like the second half of the book. And then another aspect I would consider if you're trying to pick up either of these is that I feel like Book Lovers was a little bit more like happy-go-lucky whereas The Roughest Draft is a little bit more dark. The characters are going through some like difficult stuff and they've had previous hang-ups and like have a lot more angst to them I feel like whereas Book Lovers was a lot more fun and like cute I would say. So depending on what kind of vibe you're looking for you might want to go for one or the other. Next up I have a couple fantasies. So if you liked Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan you'll probably like Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I feel like both of these are quite similar. They're a little bit different in tone and I personally liked one more than the other but I still think they're both really great and have some really wonderful fantastical elements and a whole other fantasy world to them. Daughter of the Moon Goddess is about the daughter of the moon goddess and her sort of journey as she's trying to make her way in the world and help her mother and it's set in this like completely different fantasy world and it's inspired by Chinese mythology as well and I believe this is an adult but people have told me that this is a YA so I'm not actually sure but this one feels like a YA fantasy to me and it does have a bit of a focus on like the love interests and like the two love interests that the main character focuses on but overall just this really endearing and sweet fantasy that has some wonderful character growth to it and one that's not too heavy because a lot of the conflict resolves itself quite quickly so if you like a lot of those aspects you'll probably like Six Crimson Cranes this one's definitely more tonally happy and I would say it's more like a fairy tale more like a Disney movie I would say but it's got a lot of similar elements a very endearing main character who just wants the best for everyone and who is trying to do their best and who really cares for their family but this one involves a main character who is basically cursed by their like evil stepmother character and they are banished from their kingdom and she is forced to sort of find a way to break this curse that has also affected her brothers who have been turned into cranes and so she's thrown into the situation where she's like meeting other characters across the kingdom and there's like a prince character and there's like a dragon character as well and there's a little bit of a love triangle in this one but I would say it's more focused on one love interest than the other one so it's definitely less of that love triangle situation that goes on in this book and overall this one also has like that aspect of everything resolving quite nicely so I feel like if you wanted something slightly darker I would go with daughter of the moon goddess but if you wanted something a little bit more fun and cute I would go with six crimson cranes if you wanted more political drama I would go with daughter of the moon goddess but if you wanted some really great side characters and cute interactions and funny banter I would go with six crimson cranes next I have a couple books that are not completely correlated they are not the same genre they're not even both fiction but I think personally they would work if you're the type of person who loved one of these books you'll probably like the other one so if you liked I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy which is a memoir where the author describes her life as a child actor and sort of the abuses that she faced from her mother and also the eating disorder that she went through so if you like this I feel like personally that you might like Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. This is a YA contemporary fiction novel and it's definitely not a memoir so just keep that in mind but I think if you personally vibed with the issues that Jeanette McCurdy talks about in her memoir have similar experiences or if you just found it moving I think then you might also feel the same about Yoke. It goes over quite similar issues not in the aspect of like the child acting thing but I think the idea of a complicated relationship with a parent and also the eating disorder aspect I think those were pretty strong in this book. The tone of Yoke is very similar to I'm Glad My Mom Died in the sense that a lot of difficult things happen to this main character in this book but she gets through it with very dark humor and I think that's part of the appeal of both of these books so if you liked that dark humor I think either of these books 
would vibe with you. But again, just keep in mind that this is a fictional novel and this is a memoir about someone's actual experiences. So in some ways they're absolutely incomparable, but I think there's something about it that can vibe with you if you liked one or the other. Next up, I have a couple literary fictions. So if you liked The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, then I think you might like Pachinko by Min Jin Lee or vice versa. I will say that Pachinko has a lot more difficult and harrowing things that happen in it. And it's definitely got a lot of triggers. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna pick it up. But I think what's similar about both these books is that they take place in mostly history and they follow one family over multiple generations. And so you're seeing how generational trauma sort of ripples through each set of children and I think it's really interesting in that way. Another thing that I think is really important about both these books is that they both tackle the idea of race and ethnicity. This one is more about like race in America and being black in America, whereas this book follows Koreans in Japan during their colonial period and it deals with like the discrimination that Koreans face and also how they were continuously treated as second class citizens. Both of these books are just so profound and moving and they were both five star reads for me and I was just sobbing by the end of both of them. Alrighty, next up I have two recommendations for the same book, but for different reasons. So if you liked Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, then I think you might like one of these next two books. So if you liked the satirical aspect of Elena Richardson's character in this book, who is the white woman character who doesn't think she's racist, but kind of is, then you might like At Least You Have Your Health by Maddie Cena. This book has a similar character named Amelia in it, and she is the head of this like alternative medicine service. And our main character, Maya, is this like working mom gynecologist who gets roped into working for this service because she's in a tight spot. And I think the relationship that Maya and Amelia have in this book is very similar to the one that Mia and Elena have in this book. There's this element of race, there's element of privilege, and there's this element of satirizing that sort of Karen character. I will say that both of these books is very different in tone though. This one is definitely more of a contemporary fiction, lighthearted read, whereas this one is definitely more of a literary fiction and has a lot of subtext to it. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you are looking for a book that is very similar to Little Fires Everywhere in tone, especially to do with the satire and also the literary fiction subtext that it has to it, then I would definitely pick up Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I absolutely love this book and it is such a fantastic read. And it also has a very similar character to Elena Richardson, which is Alex Chamberlain. And I think the vibe between the main characters is also very similar in both books. But I think what's compelling about Such a Fun Age is that it definitely matches the tone of Little Fires Everywhere and maybe even takes it a step further. I think this book struggles to completely confront the race element, whereas this one takes it full in force. And I think that's what makes it so fantastic. If you love books with really fraught, tense scenes between the characters and lots of subtext, then these are definitely the books for you. Alrighty, next up I have another trio of books that you might like any of them if you liked one of them. So if you liked The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, which is a really epic fantasy set in a alternate version of China with some magic and a really badass main character, then you might like Iron Widow by Shirin J. Zhao. And you might also like The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. All of these have a sci-fi fantasy element to them. This one is more fantasy. Iron Widow is more sci-fi. Poppy War is definitely more fantasy. All of them, I think, have this bad bitch main character who gives no fucks and is trying to make her way in the world. And I love that. And I think all three of these main characters are very unpredictable, which I think is what makes them so fun. So if you like the Poppy War for the main character and for the way that you never knew what she was thinking or what she was gonna do, then you'll definitely like the main character in Iron Widow or in Keeper of Night. I will say out of the three of these, the Poppy War is my favorite, then Iron Widow, then the Keeper of Night. But if you're looking for any of those elements, you'll probably like any of these. If you want more of a war and politics aspect, I would go with the Poppy War. If you want more of a character journey, character growth story, I would go with the Keeper of Night. If you want a slightly politics, but also very feminist story, then I would go with Iron Widow. And if you want romance, I would also go with Iron Widow. It has more of a romance to it. Alrighty, next up I have a four book chain of books that I think if you like one, you might like the other, and then you might like the other, and then you might like the other. So starting with Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is a dark academia setner 
our real world, no real magical aspect to it, but it is this very dark story of this shared obsession that this group of friends end up having together and a murder that they commit together. And it's just this novel of pure suspense from beginning to end. So if you like this, then you'll probably like If We Were Villains by ML Rio. This one is very similar in plot and also in vibe. So this one has students who are studying Greek in university, whereas this one is about a bunch of drama students in this like Shakespearean academy. They only do Shakespeare plays. So I think both of them have their own like fields of study that they deal with, but this one like really brings in that Shakespeare element and there's a lot of like references to plays. So if you don't like that, you might not like this, but if you like this dark academia aesthetic and vibe, if you want like characters who end up committing a murder together and also share this like level of obsession and sort of deteriorate together, then these are definitely the books for you. On a similar note, if you did like The Secret History, you'll probably like Babel by R.F. Kuang. I will say that the dark academia aspect of this book really only comes in from the like midpoint onwards. So it's only really the second half. The first half is more of this kid coming to this school and learning things and forming these friendships and realizing that colonialism is bad. But if you are still looking for that dark academia aspect, this one definitely has it in the second half. I think if you like The Secret History, but you wanted more of a critique of the overall system and more of the academic aspect of a dark academia, then this one definitely has more of that. It really focuses on the learning and academic aspect in the first half of the book. And it also has a really stark look at colonialism as a system and as a horrible thing in our world. Now, in continuation of that, if you really liked Babel and you really liked the confrontation with colonialism and also like systems of power, and if you liked the direction it took towards the very end of the book, especially like the last third of the book, then I think you might like, and this is a really big stretch, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I know these are very different books, but just hear me out. This one is an alternate history fantasy, and this one is like an alternate world, massive sci-fi story. But both of these have an aspect of a main character who is from a marginalized background or situation and who ends up becoming part of the enemy and trying to break the system from within. Especially in this first book of Red Rising, the second book takes it in a further direction. But in the first book and in Babel, there really is that element of a character who is not welcomed by the you know systems of power, but ends up in a situation where they have the opportunity to take everything down from the inside, but then realize that maybe that's not the only way to do things and that maybe there's a necessity for violence. I'm not gonna spoil anything for those of you who haven't read Babel, but yeah, I feel like if you like the last third of this book, then you'll really also like Red Rising. They are quite totally different. And you know, if you're not very into sci-fi, then you probably won't like this. But there's also the aspect that both these books start with a pretty young character and you see them grow up and change over the course of the book. So that's also quite interesting. Alrighty, and with that said, those are all the recommendations that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some new books to pick up. I feel like a lot of these I tried to compare based off of like plot or certain characters or the vibe overall or the tone of the book. And I think there's really any which way you could compare two books and find a thread that you might enjoy across a few. And I do feel like a lot of these recommendations I base off of my own taste because I have a pretty broad genre taste. Like I'm not constricted to a specific genre. So I find that like if there's a connecting theme across two books that are from two completely different genres, then I'll still end up enjoying them. But if you're not like that, that's totally okay. If you're someone who just reads from like mainly one genre, then hopefully the ones that I compared in the same genre will work for you. As always, I would love to hear from you guys what you thought of these books and if you agree with any of my comparisons today. And if you have any recommendations of if I like this book, then I might like this other book, then leave them down below for me. As always, don't forget to check out my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and TikTok if you want to get regular updates on my reading and what I'm up to. And if you're looking for another video to watch for me, go check out my top 10 books of 2022. I have a lot of favorites on there and you might find one that you're going to love. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. So please remember that this story ain't over. Bye.